Да. Добрый день, извините, у нас там надо было свести с презентацией. Так, хорошо. Значит, у нас сейчас короткая сессия, посвященная организационной модели школ международного бакалавриата. Я не знаю, все ли присутствующие, но вижу, что многие знают, что это такое, но кто не знает, по ходу будет узнавать. Сегодня утром была одна сессия, где об этом говорилось подробнее. Меня зовут Михаил Шнейдер, я директор гимназии 45 имени Мельграмма в Москве и президент некоммерческого партнерства содействия развития международных школ. Но я буквально вот два-три слова и передам инициативу нашей гости, которая работает в организации международного бакалавриата. Это огромная организация, в которую входит уже почти 5000 школ на всех континентах. И более 150 стран мира эти школы, эти школы находятся более чем в 150 странах мира. Вот. И поскольку организаторы очень просили обсудить вопрос именно орг-модели школ, вот как раз этому первая из двух сессий будет посвящена. И я представляю вам Ведрана Павлетич, менеджер по развитию и признанию организации международного бакалавриата регион Африка, Европа, Ближний Восток. Это регион такой маленький-маленький, там примерно 90 стран. Так что работы нашей гости хватает, но она вот здесь, и мы этому очень рады. Сегодня на целый день у нас работает в разных форматах и общается, в частности, со школами международного бакалавриата, которых в России 40, а недавно было совсем немного, но это уже другая история. So, Big pleasure for me to be here every time when I'm in Russia. Uh, we have really good time, and uh, I'm really glad that uh, I was given this opportunity to to talk to you. First of all, about um, the collaboration in, in school and how that changes the the culture in the school. Um, I will talk from the international baccalaureate perspective, but also from the perspective of uh, me, my personal perspective as being a teacher and uh, educator in the, in the first place. So I don't know if all of you are familiar with the international baccalaureate, but um, as you can see, um, the international baccalaureate is a non-profit organization that uh, works with uh, public, private, international schools all around the world on all the continents. Uh, trying to make a, a more peaceful, a better world through uh, education. Our mission and our philosophy is uh, transferred to the IB Learner uh, profile with 10 attributes um, that you see represented here and that feed into the approaches to teaching and learning, which are very specific skills that uh, all of our not only students but also teachers uh, actually have some of these uh, you see here thinking communication self-management and so on but today i would like to focus on collaboration from my experience of uh, working with schools with uh, educators especially schools who just start implementing um, one of our programs or international education in general the key skill that is requested from uh, all the members of the community and i don't think only about the students and teachers but also the parents and the school administration the key skill is collaboration because that gets the whole community um, to, to to change their way of uh, uh, thinking The collaboration actually brought all the programs of the, of the International Baccalaureate uh, together. Um, this is just a reminder uh, that we started long time ago in 1968 with the diploma program and then moved on uh, through middle years program to primary years program and then the last one um, developed in 2012. Uh, was the career-related related program. All of them together make um, an IB continuum, 
that puts always the student in the center. So all our schools have to focus on the students individually through teaching and learning, through inquiry, action, and reflection on what the students have learned, introducing global contexts, some things that are happening in the world that students should, should understand, right? Um, and of course, through the focus of multilingualism, intercultural understanding, and engagement on the local and global, global level. The IB programs, all four of them, offer a broad and balanced uh, conceptual and connected curriculum that is partially developed by each school. So each school has the freedom to develop um, its, own, its own curriculum. And that goes for all, all four programs. I would like to show you a very short um, excerpt from a movie that, um, um, that you might have seen before, but I hope it will get us into thinking of this, um, this shift in thinking when you introduce some, some modern ways of uh, teaching and, uh, and learning. Can we get the video starting? The video? Тишина. Таблица умножения на 5 делилась. 5 ю 1, 5, 5 ю 2, 10, 5 ю 3, 15, 5 ю 4, 20. 5 ю 5 Тишина Боча, боча Если не научитесь правильно считать и писать, ничего не сможете делать в жизни, никогда не найдете работу Последний раз спрашиваю, сколько будет пятью пять? Рождество. So this is of course from from a movie, and I hope you you haven't recognized any practices from your schools, um, but it, you know it has to do with what was done maybe 50 or I would say 100 or 150 years ago in the classroom. Hopefully today we wouldn't see something like this. Although I must say, when I visit some schools, you still see a very traditional classroom setup where students are not allowed to move freely. They're not allowed to ask questions when they want. They have to ask for permission. Um, so these are the things that, that we must think of when we start introducing, introducing the change. Um, so that was the classroom of, of past. These are the skills that were required back then to be a successful employee of any, of any company back then, mid 20th century, right? You were supposed to have very neat handwriting. You were supposed to have a lot of facts in your head, excellent mathematic skills, calculating, good memory, um, being able to follow orders. So, no, no way for, for any imagination, uh, good with routine, um, loyalty was also expected and you were actually grateful for being given the opportunity to have a, to have a, a job for a lifetime, right? And of course you were expected to stay in the field, in the field that you started your career in, so there was no, no change, right? The trends back then are completely different than the trends today. The trends today, we call them progressive, but I wouldn't say that they're progressive at all. They're the trends of today. So, for example, from pure memorization of facts, today we ask our students to think critically, to analyze things. From same content for all, we look at the students on an individual basis, right? From just closed subjects, 
today we teach in a transdisciplinary or interdisciplinary way. So these are just some changes that occurred over the last 50 or, or 70 years. So what is required today from a possible future employee? The ability to express ideas clearly and confidently, to be confident in the presentation, to be able to work within a group, to understand the realities of the, of the trends and the market today that affect the organization that you work for, uh, the problem solving, ability to act on initiative, determination to get things done, not only following orders, but to be creative, um, ability to express, uh, express clearly in writing, ability to plan and deliver effectively, uh, to successfully adapt to changes because there are so many changes today, right? Ability to manage time effectively, to prioritize and so on. For something like that, we need open education. Creative, student-focused education. From the Partnership for 21st Century Skills, um, I took this um, excerpt. Um, I would like to read it so that you get the translation as well. Open education means developing a robust, engaging 21st century curriculum and employing 21st century pedagogies re which require educators to look outside schools and seek ideas, resources and expertise where they are found in their communities, in professional and educational groups, and in individuals, schools, and organizations around the world. Just to go back to the International Baccalaureate for a moment, when we started in the 60s and the 70s, um, there were only seven schools that implemented the International Baccalaureate uh, programs. Today, I'm proud to say that we have almost 5,000 schools, many of which are based in in Russia, many of which in Moscow. What is interesting is also that the profile of schools actually changes. Um, at the beginning, it was 100% private schools. And then today, we have actually the majority of, uh, of state public, public schools. How to make that change happen? How to have uh, your school community work in a work in a, in, a, in a slightly different way, through collaboration. I believe from my experience that that is absolutely the main, um, the main way to, to change the thinking of your teachers, um, students, and the whole, the whole school community. Why should you listen to me talking about collaboration? Not only because, uh, of course, not at all, because I come from the International Baccalaureate, but because I worked for a long time as a teacher, where I move from, from being an, a subject expert to focusing really on the student. So not focusing on the content that I teach, but focusing on the needs of the student that are, that are with me um, in the classroom and outside the classroom. Also, I was um, the deputy head of school and uh, that was a completely different experience of uh, trying to collaborate, of course, with the team and with the, with the community from individual kingdoms, right? Because you sit in your big office and you think, okay, this is me collaborating with myself, to shared responsibilities in the whole, uh, in the whole community. And then of course my role in the IB. It's a really a complex role where we support schools that offer uh, IB programs from all around the world. Not only in Russia, not only in Europe, but in the whole, in the whole world. If we were in a smaller setting where you could collaborate, I would ask you, what is collaboration? We don't have that opportunity today, but uh, I would like to quote uh, the educationalist Ken Royal, who says that collaboration is in its simplest and most understandable form, getting individuals who may or may not have similar interests 
to work together in an organized endeavor to a satisfying and most appropriate group end. Basically, the outcome of collaboration is decided by the group. So not by this one individual sitting in the room, but the whole group of people that work in an organization or in a school. Just so that you know from his, uh, from his book. When I was thinking about how to present the collaboration layers, um, I actually thought of something very typical for, for Russia, and that is your uh, matryoshka. Am I pronouncing it well? Hope so. So just imagine yourself being in the middle this time and think about all the layers of collaboration that, that you actually can use to make things in your, in your school better. First of all, just basic day-to-day -day collaboration, right? With your colleagues, uh, with the administrators, uh, with parents if they, if they want to join. Then, of course, the whole school collaboration with everybody who is involved, the students as well. So to collaborate with the students. Unfortunately, we don't have too much time in this session to dive deeper into, the, into all these uh, layers. And then, of course, associate industry collaboration. That means everything that is added that all the participants in the collaboration in the school can actually bring into, into the collaboration, taking into account what each of your teachers can participate to your, to your school life. And then finally, outer collaboration in the local community or in the wider community. In terms of the International Baccalaureate, collaborating in between the IB schools, for example. So that is also an example of of outer co collaboration. I often hear how collaborating is very difficult. It requires time. Um, teachers are sometimes very tired of, of these meetings that happen after they are done with teaching. So I put together a list of good things and some bad things that you can look at, simply as a, as a tips. So good things about collaboration you bring in new ideas, new relationships possibly, new resources for the school, which is extremely important. Innovative resources, strengthen networks, increased legitimacy. All of these things are positive, and I'm sure you can come up with so many, so many other positive things. And then something that we called collaborative inertia. Endless discussions stalemates, unproductive meetings, lack of participation. I'm sure you recognize that in yourself sometimes, sometimes in all the meetings that you, that you have with, with teachers and so on. In the International Baccalaureate, we put a lot of emphasis on, on collaboration because we really believe that that changes the way schools operate. And that is, of course, all, all presented in the IB standards and practices. One of the standards refers only to collaboration. So these are all the practices that uh, mention collaboration and that, of course, all the IB schools should be, should be familiar with. I'm not going to read all of them, of course. Standards and practices are available for, for all, all the schools and everybody interested. And then simply because we are running out of time, In the IB, we believe in the leadership for a collaborative learning community. Um, so it's not, it's not just the leader of the school who is delegating things, but it's really connecting with, with the teachers, connecting with the students, connecting with the parents to develop a learning community in your school and then wider with other schools and possibly within the whole city and so on, right? Another uh, pedagogue, um, Dylan William, says that working as a group, not just working in a group. I don't know if that will be translated uh, well, but uh, that would be my, simply my 
final quote for you to think about. Working as a group, not just working in a group. All together is, of course, present. These are just some questions that uh, you might want to think about. All of that is present again in all four IB programs. Unfortunately, we cannot squeeze in much more uh, in this session, but uh, if you have any comments or questions, please, uh, please let me know. Пожалуйста, коллеги, вопросы. Наверное, больше трех не успеем, но есть какие-то по... And Irina will help все, все предельно... Так, есть вопрос. За счет чего достигается такая хорошая транслируемость организационной модели международного бакалавриата в, новых, в новые школы? So that is, that is a very complex, complex question that I could talk about for a long time. But uh, first of all, to look, at, to look at how you can actually reach out, first of all, to your um, parents, because they must support the implementation of the program. If you don't get the parents' support and parents' understanding of what you're doing with their children, the program implementation won't happen. So that is, that is the first step. And then allow enough time for that um, switch in thinking to happen um, in your uh, school community and especially with the teachers because they have to be ready to, to implement all these, new, all these new things. Maybe after teaching for 25 years in a very strict and narrow um, national curriculum. I see that very often. Uh, do you have special instruments, uh, maybe special rules? Uh, spe there are no rules, but there are guidelines, and they're um, presented in the IB standards and practices. So, for, And then, of course, you go from practice to practice and try to implement that within your community. When you start, you have to... You are required to implement, possibly, just a small part of all the standards and practices, because there are... 80 or, or almost 100 different practices. So when you start implementing, maybe 30% would meet the requirement at that point. After five years, you're supposed to understand and implement 100% or almost 100%. Насколько я понимаю, частные школы также uh, могут быть в системе IB работать. Тогда возникает вопрос. Очень многие сейчас уходят от формальных структур школ к смешанным структурам, когда это может быть и дистанционное, и онлайн обучение, и форматы очные. В данном случае возможно ли аттестоваться такой школе, школе будущего возможно? So distant learning is not a new thing in the IB because the diploma program that started in 1968, some 15 or 20 years ago, introduced online courses. So for the students who m might be, the, for example, you have only one student that would like to, to, to learn a specific language in the diploma program. Of course, you wouldn't hire a teacher just for that one student. But then there are these online courses that are set up as distant learning for that student to actually accomplish his or her goal and get the diploma at the end. So this is definitely possible, especially for the diploma program. In the primary years and, uh, and middle years program and career-related program partially, not yet. Пожалуйста, еще, если есть один-два вопроса, и, наверное, надо будет переходить к следующей сессии. Или все, пока. Пока все. Тогда, Верона, thank you so much for your okay. presentation. Всем большое спасибо. И дальше тематика будет похожая, но уже, я бы сказал, международная. Наталья. Спасибо огромное.